You know what? The initials of the Gundam Justice Knight says it all. We thought this guy was gonna be cool. JK. What is going on guys, MJ2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the high grade Gundam Justice Knight from Gundam Build Divers Re-Rise. So this thing right off the bat, I really, really like the pure white. Now I could go for an entirely silver color scheme because after all, this is supposed to represent a knight with a red cape. But I love the pure white on this thing. It just looks very, very nice. And it does actually make the light brown and the gray pop on this color scheme. And also, well, the gold, I have to say, it is not the shit gold that we are used to in, for example, the Hyakushiki Revive. And it does have a very, very slight metallic green. I don't know if, it, if it's showing on the camera, but... In person, it does have a very, very slight metallic shine and metallic green on it. So, if you do not want to paint it, it's still fine. But if you prefer to paint it, then go ahead and paint it because this gold is not everybody's cup of tea. But right out of the box, this thing does look very, very nice. Now, stickers are minimal. The color separation is actually phenomenal on this thing because the chest, no stickers except for the vents, of course. And then the front skirts over here, these are actual pieces that go into the uh, protrusions to make the thrusters on the skirts. The, yeah, of course, these are stickers. And of course, these eyes and sensors are stickers. But yeah, the chest phenomenal color separation and the feet of course it does have amazing color separation especially for the beam saber hole over here because the feet came from the infinite justice plate so i could confirm that these are the uh beam saber holes and then i really like the the cuts in the actual foot armor over here just because they they really do represent a knight and the face plates over here yep just like a knight's helmet and Night Mohawk. I wouldn't want this in red, but yeah, a gold does fit the head color scheme. And the neon green over here does look really, really nice. Overall, this thing is very, very good looking. Amazing color separation and very, very good color scheme that does represent a knight. And it doesn't use a generic full gray color scheme like a set of knight's armor. For the articulation of this guy, it doesn't have any polycaps, so I cannot use my generic speech. So the head is on a ball joint and a neck joint. It does have limitations because of the back of the head over here, this piece. And it's very, very tight because it's plastic on plastic. The arms, they can rotate over here, obviously. They can come out that far. And since, yeah, it is using the Destiny's joint, so the arms and the chest is not customizable with a lot of the kits out there. So, this does also have a swivel joint, like shrugging joint, I would like to call it. And then these gold fins can move. The gold fins can move out of the way entirely. The shoulder armor can move as well. So, they're kind of separate from the actual arms themselves, which can go out that far. The arms can rotate above the elbow, bend at the elbow at two joints, which kind of gets obstructed by the spike on the shoulders, but it does have a very, very nice bend. And then the chest, it's interesting. So, uh, let me move the cape out of the way. So, it does have the rotation in the waist over here, but the stomach can move back and forwards and side to side at the same time and you can see the waist is also moving around as well so you can get this guy to do like absolutely amazing crunches so yeah there is a lot of articulation in the stomach and waist so yeah you can pull off a lot of the more dynamic poses the front skirts came separate side skirts can move upwards and backwards just like the destiny gundam and the back skirt can move but it's to unlock a mechanic but not actually move out of the way so the mechanic in question is if you move out the back skirt it unlocks the expansion of the leg joints over here so you could expand the legs over here and actually close the back skirt back into the legs and it actually plugs into the basket to lock them down now it does have a wider stance and also it does allow for you to pull off 
like more than the full splits. So this thing can have like an amazing range of articulation to the side in the legs. But the mechanic is more for aerial posing. So if you're on the ground, then just revert it back. So the back skirt all in all can move, but it is not to move out of the way, sadly. And then the legs, I showed the mechanic, but then other than that, they can go forwards and go backwards. Outwards, you already know how crazy it is. Rotation at the hip. This does look pretty bad with the side skirt move out of the way, but I could understand it. Well, just cover it up with the side skirt. Rotation at the thigh, double jointed knee, definitely looks nice. And then the front piece of armor over here can move on a joint. Then the feet can move forwards and back, side to side, rotate a little bit, and then the toe can point down slightly. And then for the backpack, the backpack, the joints here in the chest, they can accommodate for the motion over here, just like the Justice Gundam. And then the cloak itself, it does have another joint. It does have another hinge over here, which can be moved separately if you detach it, but why would anybody do that? And then the wings over here, it can open up. So all in all, the articulation on the Gundam Justice Knight or the Infinite Justice Mold is very, very astonishing. Yeah, you could definitely pull off like crazy poses with all the mobility in the frame of the Justice Mold. So definitely, this guy's articulation is exemplary. So for accessories, let's talk about what is not included in the Injustice Weapon set, the sword. This thing is called the Galatine Longsword. Galatine being the sword that Sir Gawain from the Round Table used. So the sheath actually looks very very nice. The sword is actually one piece, but I do not know if it's accurate. But of course you can color the blade in silver. And yeah, the sheath is color accurate and separate. So the gold is separate from the brown. It does have a peg over here. And you peg it onto the side skirts, like so. And then you pull the galatine out. It's very very short. Like, let me tell you this. It does have a little bit more space in the brown for the blade to be longer. So personally, if I could scratch build, I would extend the blade because it looks very very short. It's like in the middle ground between a dagger and a sword. It's like a short sword, if I may say so myself, despite this thing being called the long sword. And the galatine is definitely a long sword in Arthurian mythology. So definitely extend the blade if you so fancy. So now let's talk about what is included in the Injustice weapon set. First of all, it's the round shield. Now the round shield is going to be in the blue in the weapon set, but it is in the red and gray in the Gundam Justice Knight. Now as you can see, you can actually collapse the handle and the connector for the arm over here. And, and also let me bring in the Raite shot lance, the Raite being lightning or thunder in Japanese. Because this thing does have an awkward mechanic that resembles a support unit. So you take off the cloak. This thing is included in the Injustice weapon set as well. And then you plug the lance in the peg over here. Like so. And then you plug the shield. You plug this peg into this hole over here. Like so. And then you open the wings up and this is what i like to call the injustice unit but it's just labeled as support unit so yeah you could actually deploy a support unit but i do not know if this guy would actually deploy this thing in the anime but hopefully he will because he cannot fight on his own and let's go back to the shield it does have a moving fin over here to adjust to the positions and then you basically take off this and i like to plug the connector on the top hole and Yep, that happens. And then plug the handle into the middle hole. And then you bring in the Gundam Justice Knight. Crack open the hand cover. So it is actually very, very tight inside of the hand when the hand cover is fully, fully closed. So you could actually raise the shield like that. But yeah, of course, because it's starting to pry open. So let's just connect it into the arm like so. And then in the instructions, oh my god, I messed this up. And then in the instructions, it actually tells you to close the golden fins on the shoulders just to get out of the way. But I actually like to clamp the actual silver fin over here or the gray fin inside of it. So that's basically the shield. It does look nice. And then for the Raite Shot Lancer over here, it's basically 
a lance gun. So it doesn't, is it isn't really anything special. It does have a very very cool looking lance head over here with the guns mounted on the side. It's basically just a regular old shot lancer. So you could either have it hold it like so to fire or have him hold it in the long handle for melee. And I really like the handle design because well if you guys can have it if you guys wanted to have long reach you could definitely hold it here but there is a rectangular section over here. So if you slot it in, it will not rotate. It will not go out of position. But unfortunately, that's only that one spot. So yeah, you cannot have it have long reach if you put the hand in the rectangular section so as to not have it rotate all over the place. But this thing definitely does look nice. So that's gonna be all the accessories for the Gundam Justice Knight. But then I'm not done because this kit does not have an action base hole in the crotch. So what they did is gave us an adapter. Now the stand is not included, but the adapter is. So you basically just clip it in like so. And there we go. The Justice Knight is airborne. And then this kit does come with two adapters that are gonna be included in the Injustice weapon set as well. So first of all, this is basically the adapter to plug into the Justice Knight so as to allow it to plug any uh, double peg backpack onto the back of the Justice Knight. So it is more customizable than you think with the rectangular holes over here, but it does require assistance of an adapter. But if you want to do vice versa, you can basically grab this adapter and plug it onto any Gunpla that has a double peg system on the back and plug on the cloak. Looks stupid on the Transient Glacier, but it will look good on any kit. And of course, the coming Infinite Justice backpack as well. So yeah, you could definitely mess around with these adapters and the Justice backpacks just to give your kits more of a Justice personality. For comparisons, let's bring in, first of all, the Earth 3 Gundam. They do definitely look nice together. Next up, Let's bring in the old Infinite Justice that I built, well, you guys can hear that, that I built seven years ago. Here you have it, and here's the Faltum 2. The Stingray, as I like to call it. And yeah, the Justice Knight with the legs bent is still taller than the old Infinite Justice. And thank God. With the arrival of this kit, it confirms that an HGCE Infinite Justice is on the way. So, you guys can rejoice over it. But anyways, that's going to be it for the Gundam Justice Knight. I really, really like this kit. Honestly, the look of this is amazing. Like, I like the pure white that actually pops the neon green, the light brown, and the gray out. And I like the Injustice weapon set over here. It is overall a good kit. But... With the flaws, well, there isn't really any structural integrity flaws, but I would have liked the Galatine to be longer, just a tad bit longer, so as to call it a sword. But then the arms, of course, the shoulders and the chest are not really customizable at all with most of the kits that we have now. So the arms and the chest is only customizable with the Barzan, the Zeta. And all of its variants, of course, the AZ is in there, and then the Destiny Gundam. So, yeah, most of the upper body is not compatible with most kits, which is what I'm really sad about. So, with all of that said, this thing comes in at an 8 out of 10. Like, despite all the flaws that the two marks were deducted for, I would definitely recommend this kit. Of course, you may be turned off by it by how stupidly it is piloted by the Build Divers version of Patrick Colossor, I would definitely recommend this kit and it is a worthy addition to my collection. So that's it for me. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did like it, please be sure to drop a like, comment, and also subscribe for more Gunpla reviews, Gunpla news, and all that kind of stuff. Subscribe to the featured channels on my channel page to support them if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out guys. Bye bye.